and welcome to London Fashion Film Festival FF Chat. My name is Bailey and I'm here today with Mary Schmidt who is the director of Dream Travel in the Pastel which was nominated for Best Makeup and Hairstyle at London Fashion Film Festival 2015 and Mary also directed Pink Purse which was nominated for Best Actor Model Award at London Fashion Film Festival 2016 and also, as if that's not enough, director of Beautifully Delinquent, which was officially selected for London Fashion Film Festival 2016. Mallory, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, so maybe to get started, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into filmmaking. Uh, yeah, so I, my background is that I'm a 3D modeler and uh, I'm a props master in film and TV in Canada. So I work in different TV shows and build props and sets and uh, with another group of art department. So that got me interested um, to bring over some set design and some props design into the fashion world. So I started organizing fashion shoots and I actually am completely self-taught for um, photography and camera work. I just taught myself. <laughs> yeah. Wow, excellent. So how, how long have you, when, when was it that you first started getting into filmmaking? Um, I would say about five years ago. About five years. Yes, I see. Okay, so tell us about um, Dream Travel in the Pastel. Um, so that, that was maybe my fourth fashion film that I've ever made and it was inspired by uh, quite a few things. So, I... How do I explain this? <laughs> <laughs> how did you come up with the idea? I came up with the idea when I was... I had lots of vivid dreams. So, and I end up remembering maybe two or three dreams every morning. Okay. And uh, it goes through spurts. Sometimes I don't remember, but sometimes I remember a lot. And then I was thinking about that kind of dreamland and when you dream about yourself I wonder because in dreams there's no restrictions and no limits and no rules with um, gravity or anything so sometimes I would wonder I wonder if there's more truth to the world in dreamland than there is in real life and so I wanted to make a fashion film that was inspired by that concept and listening to the messages that your dream self is trying to tell you in your dreams and bring back those little bits of your dreams that you can remember into your real world. So do you like write your dreams down as soon as you wake up in the morning? Um, sometimes I have, but oftentimes I'm lucky enough that I'll be able to remember them at least for a couple days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your film, Pink Purse, was nominated for Best Actor Model Award. How, how did you go about choosing your cast? Well, Valeria is, was the model for that. And she, I've worked with her quite a few times and she's one of my favorite models that I've worked with in where I'm from in Edmonton. Actually, she's one of my favorite models in Canada because she just completely commits and really goes for it and listens really well. I think um, a model that can listen to instructions as well as understand the concept and really believe in it. She's an actress as well, so that helps. But not only is she amazing and commits, but she's a complete chameleon. So anything, she can take makeup so well, um, a really natural look or a really intense look. Um, she's actually the same model in Beautifully Delinquent and you wouldn't be able to tell because she's such a chameleon. <laughs> mm. So you've worked with her on quite a number of occasions? Yes. So do you do you sort of bother kind of benchmarking her against other model stroke actors or is it just like, no, I know this is the person I'm going with? Sometimes when there's a concept I'll be like, yes, Valeria, it has to be her. Um, but then, of course, I think it's to not restrict yourself that you're always working with the same people. Always consider other people 
but sometimes concepts will come to life because you're inspired by the model mm -hmm. and I think that was the case in some of the occasions that I've worked with her yeah yeah how did you come up with the idea of a beautifully delinquent beautifully delinquent um, so I run a magazine and so there for each issue there's is a different theme and so that issue was beautifully delinquent was the theme and I think there's something really great about being able to go against the grain and really be true to yourself and be outlandish if it's genuine to you um, and be punk if it's genuine to you. But I think the key word is if you're going to go against the grain, as it's really beautiful as long as it's really genuine. Mm. So um, yeah, the the concept of that fashion film was punk feel and really um, being genuine and funky and colourful. How, how was it to direct that kind of film? Well, Valeria was the model mm -hmm. for that as well, so she's very easy to direct because um, she gives it her all, but I think, so I built different sets for that. Um, for that shoot. I built different graffitied, I took a whole bunch of plastic and put it all up on the wall and and spray, spray painted all different graffitis and um, found really fun fur fabrics and put those up on, on the wall or the floor and found some really old tires and spray painted those neon colors and it was really fun to make the set and everybody on set was really in the vibe of of being punk and edgy yeah. and so I think I think a really key element to being able to direct um, is to keep the whole entire crew in a particular vibe or energy that you're mm. looking for for the film and not just focusing on on your model or actor because it's all about energy so if the model can feel that somebody else isn't really in the same vibe it can I mean a really good model isn't going to be affected by that um, but but even a really good model can be elevated by if everybody is on the same vibe and wavelength. Mm. It's a very collaborative process isn't it you want everybody kind of like working towards that same goal I guess. Yeah 100 percent. Yeah when you're making a fashion film um, what do you focus on the most so is it the brand or the narrative? So that's an interesting question because for me it's neither and um, so to talk about narrative I feel like there's the fashion designer has already put so much thought and energy into the designs themselves and they have a narrative that's implemented and woven into what they've designed. So I think putting an outside narrative on top of that doesn't create a fashion film any longer. That creates a short film. And I think short films with a narrative are one thing and fashion films is another thing. And um, as far as brand, if, if the brand is really important, I think that's a really touchy subject uh, in that fashion films, to me, are not commercials or advertisements. I think if you're trying, if you're bringing commerce or selling something into into the video, then you're creating an advertisement, and we've all seen advertisements. Fashion films is a new medium. It's not an advertisement. It's it's focusing on the movement of, of clothing and the movement of fashion and honoring what the designer has already put in, all the thought that the designer has already put into their garments. So fashion film to me is just simply fashion and movement. Mm -hmm. Because we see so many, um, like photographs are just still images and it hasn't shown all of the thought that went into how this garment moves and flows and so 
I think that's what where fashion film comes in is showing that element that gets missed in a photograph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if you were to distill it, what do you think are the key elements that make up a really effective fashion film? Uh, well, movement of the clothing, of course, like I, I just said. I think um, the energy of why this garment was made or if it was um, an overall concept, like for, for example, the beautifully delinquent concept was really punk and outlandish, so I t pulled, well, the stylist pulled um, many different designers to be able, that all had elements of that energy in it. And so I don't think that a fashion film needs to just have one designer. In fact, I think it's more fun if it's more different desi more designers in one film that has the same vibes or energy or feeling that you're trying to evoke. And I think it's important to have a feeling instead of a narrative. I see, I see. So what does the future hold for you now? Um, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, this year, last season, and then also this season, I've been lucky enough to be uh, photographing and filming backstage for Val Garland during London and Paris Fashion Week. And so last season, I was backstage filming um, so many fashion films for her at like Vivian Westwood and Ballman and uh, shows like that. So I hope to continue to do that, and that's been a really exciting new way to uh, be on my toes and create a fashion film of the things that are presented in front of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, t tell me more about your magazine. Yeah, so Opalus, I started it about four years ago. I'm about to release the 16th issue, and it is a submission-based magazine. And so any artist, whether they're a photographer, like still life photographer, fashion photographer, fine art photographer, a sculptor, a painter, anything that is visual imagery, I accept um, submissions for. And then me and my team will review them and, and either be published on our website or in the magazine if they're accepted. And then we also publish fashion films as well. And there's different artist interviews on the website. And yeah, so Opalus is about um, fashion and visual arts. And it's things that are uniquely, like strangely beautiful or kind of weird, quirky, mm -hmm. um, fun and unexpected. So it's a place where people can really experiment and that's encouraged to experiment and explore and not be constricted by um, com like the more commercial side of mm -hmm. the fashion industry or fine art industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's viewed by over 60 countries and I've published artists uh, from 19 different countries. Wow. And it's very exciting. So, how what, what's your experience of the Fashion Film Festival? Yeah, the Fashion Film Festival have gone for three years now, and I get so excited every time. I fly all the way from Canada to come, and I think it's worthwhile every single time. I love watching all the fashion films from around the world that they accept, and it just keeps getting bigger and better and more exciting. And, uh, and yeah, I think it's a festival that I'll always be coming to. So final question, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers? I think that the advice I would give is to not be restricted by like financial um, restrictions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, or maybe other restrictions like not being able to get like the ideal location or not being able to get the hair cells that you want to work with. I think that instead of looking at those things as burdens or like, oh, I, we can't do it because we don't have this, we can't do it because I only have 20 pounds. 
I think that look at those situations as a challenge or like a fun boundary or restriction on your brief. So, because I think that that's when you'll push yourself and discover things that you otherwise wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And like if I, before I, I um, had like, I don't know, $40 to do this, this one set. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I really want to have some fabric, and I wish it was really rich and draping everywhere. Um, but how can I achieve that with basically no money? And then I thought, okay, well, how am I going to do this? And I saw rolls and rolls of children's paper, and then that, then I just made this massive set out of just paper, and that pushed me to uh, uh, thinking differently. And it was, I think, a better result than if I would have had oodles of money and get really pretty fabric. So I think restrictions like that are where you'll get the most exciting things. Yes, it's like seeing it as an opportunity to be extra creative mm -hmm. and think yeah. outside the box. Yes. Lovely. Cool. Um, well, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, and thank um, you very much. I think we're done there. Great. Thank you for having me.